Hi, I'm Darren from Isotonic Studios and welcome to this, the fourth Isotonic Studio session walkthrough. And uh, Happy New Year, as it's the first video of 2020. Over the Christmas break, um, I've basically been sitting with my headphones on, uh, ripping some vinyl, old acapellas and that kind of thing, warping them and starting to build my new live set. In the previous videos, we've looked at individual features and now I'm going to start bringing it all together. In future videos, we'll be looking at the link between Ableton Live and Serato. And I've had a few emails saying, why are you bothering? Ableton Live isn't for DJing. Well, okay, fair enough. But I can do stuff with Ableton Live that I can't do with Serato and vice versa. So I want to use the best of both. And why not try and improve on either? So in this video, I'm still using the uh, the Echo Force um, with the now released Ableton Live integration. Um, it, it's part of the menu. Um, you flick from the standalone mode into live control and it gives you a visual representation of your session view. Now, it's pretty much limited at this moment in time to playback. You do have mixer control and the like, but You've got the touch screen, which will show you which clips are playing and that tactile surface. So it's like the best of the push plus an iPad, arguably. What I've got is uh, Launch Sync XL, which you will have seen in other videos that we've done. And that's synced so that as I move across and up and down my set, as you can see here, the faders, they follow along with it. So one of the comments on the videos was, regarding the effects rack, um, the Isotonic DJ effects rack, which I've had for many years and it kind of moves and changes, etc. I'm gonna explore what's in it and expand it out and show you how I control it as well. So in essence, I have, I've kind of got clip set and DJ set. Now the clip set is quite simple. As I was playing over Christmas, I found that I was using the drum loops a lot, I was using the melodies a lot, and I was using the acapellas a lot. And I'd actually expanded those out into eight with different varieties and subgroups. But I want to keep it compact, and I want to be able to mix one set of drums with another. So I've actually got a mirror image here. So I've got drums, melody, vocal, then I've got my dummy track, and I'll come back to that in a second as we've upped the game there. And then I've got the same thing again, drums, melody, vocal, another dummy track, and then I move into three DJ tracks with a dummy track, and then a copy of those. So effectively, my set at the moment is 16 tracks, which is a couple of clicks across, and of course my volumes copy with those. Now, you had seen in, in the previous video, let's just launch a clip. We're using dummy clips to send the audio, let's just open the IO, of those first three tracks to dummy, which is set to monitor in, and the audio from there is then sent through a ordinary DJ rack that I use on the other uh, tracks, but also the Stutter FX rack as well. And I've built, um, I've built about a dozen um, clip envelope style things which have modulation, uh, let's find some. There we go, stutter FX, so I'm automating the bar there and the beat. So when that clip is triggered, you can see it is actually changing the effects rack there. And when I let go, the follow clip Excel device takes me back to the first clip which if you remember in the previous follow clip Excel, I was using a dummy clip that reset all of the values uh, back to the original. The only trouble with that was as I was fiddling around and editing and changing, it would then recall back to a different set of, and it was doing my head in. So what I've done, if you look down here, is I have what's called a snap clip, control R. And this is part of ClipX Pro. So it enables you to store presets, settings uh, for the mixer um, on the channel and devices as well. And the syntax is fairly easy. If I just go into R and we'll change this, it's in square brackets and you give it a name within the square brackets. So I've given it D1 Reset 2. 
The action you want is snap, because you're taking a snapshot of uh, the, uh, the parameters on this particular track. And you can expand this across a number of tracks or all tracks and all devices. It's just that I'm using this on the specific track itself. I'm looking at the, the devices. Uh, it's also gonna snap the, the volume, etc. But I want to look at Isotonic DJ Sender bracket four, etc., and the Isotonic Stutter FX1 track, effectively. So in which case, I just need to check have I got everything at the point where I want it to return to. And if that is the case, let's click away. If I just launch that snap clip, you'll notice that it immediately changes it immediately changes to a recall clip. And now, whatever I do to my parameters, whatever they are, a simple click of that will reset everything back to how it was at my store point. Each of the tracks has got this DJI sender, uh, DJ1 sender on it. Um, I've actually named them slightly differently, DJ2, etc., because I wanted to store them. And so I've been storing them so I can pull them back into other uh, live sets as I <laughs> hopefully start to build more. Now, the rack itself is made up of, let's just expand that, just one chain, okay? There's no clever parallel processing going on here. And all the effects are contained within an isotonic DJ rack or the 5FX rack or the utility. Simplest one is the utility, and that's mapped to the gain. And if I just quickly show you, I've got that gain set from minus six decibels to six decibels. So it's more of a trim uh, that you'd find on a DJ mixer. The other effects, what you'll notice is each of the dials is at the midway point, and that's kind of the point of having this as my uh, secondary controller, the Launch Control XL. It's got these center detents to it. And what I wanted to be able to do is actually know that whenever a, a dial is in the center, it's effectively reset. It's at the right point. Now, the bass, mid, and high, um, they're actually mapped to an EQ, and that EQ is an EQ8. Simple as that, you've got three points, and <laughs> moving them moves them. I prefer the EQ8, it gives a little bit more flexibility for uh, sculpting the sound if you like. I know people talk about color and EQ3, etc. I haven't yet got on to the new EQ device. I'm quite happy with the EQ8 as it is. Now, that covers the top. These bottom elements though, uh, let's just have a listen. Uh, so these are left, right, one knob. And if I go from filter one, you got filter high pass, filter low pass. There's a phaser. to a chorus. And then I've got a tunned effect and Casper effect, named after the people that actually donated them to me. And then a fader pump, which to the left, fade to gray. But to the right, let it build up. It's a fade pump. And what you notice, let's just pause that, is that as I move the dial, if I move it to the right, it turns up Casper, but at the middle point, it starts turning up a ton. And that's because I'm using this Smart XL device. If I open that there, what this enables me to do is actually control parameters as I see fit. Let's just close down some bits here so we can see this fully. Now, Smart is basically a way of controlling a number of parameters at the same time with one. But in this case, I'm actually using the uh, individual curves. So for example, curve one looks after the high pass filter and curve two looks after the low pass filter. So high pass and low pass. If I just move that, 
you can see as that progresses, it's going to change that high pass filter and move up. Let's do it on tunned, here we go. So tunned at the middle is effectively off, turn it to the left and it increases. And I've done the opposite with the Casper effect. So up to the middle does nothing and then increases as well. Now this does open up a whole load of possibilities. In fact, I have the Q, there we go, of the filter, so that as I move it left and right in the high pass and low pass, the resonance is very high, but then as it reaches the, the top end of the filter, it starts to pull it back down, so you don't get those artifacts coming. It's taken a little bit of time to map it and to create the curves how I want, but it gives me complete control over everything that's going on. Now, I've done one of those for each of the tracks, and that means that I can actually then use those because they're all in the same position, all with the same uh, parameters, no difference, with my launch sync device. So if I open that up, and uh, let's, let's lock it to the Launch Control XL. And this Launch Control XL is actually running our Launch Control XXL control surface script. It has user mode six, and user mode six actually gives over all of the uh, dials and knobs to the currently in focus device. As standard, you would only ever get eight. But with this, I'm actually now mapped to my window and I've got the high, the mid and the base. So this is gonna look after the high, mid and base of the eight tracks that are in focus with the Akai Force. If I switch banks, which I do from the controller, I move into bank two and bank two looks after the Tun Casper, uh, the phaser and chorus and the filter. If I move into bank three, bank three I've got mapped to my gain, to my trim, to the track punning, and to the fader pump. Bank four ooh, is actually mapped to my sends. So I've got A, B, and C, and in my sends I've got devices by uh, the guys, oh, Surreal Machines got magnetic and I've got diffuse. I've got a couple of uh, magnetics together. Uh, I like the sound that, that comes out of chaining them together, to be fair. And of course, each of these mappings, we'll go back to one, let's do that, has my master reset button, which can basically reset my entire live set back to the start point of how I want to set off with my performance. Each track, Isotonic DJ Sender, allowing us to effectively um, control the EQ and a ton of effects on the track. Each of the three tracks then gets fed into a dummy clip track so we can play with the effects as well. And we repeat that for the clips and then we do basically like the identical same but with actual full tracks broken down into clips. Yeah, it's been fun putting this together. Thanks for watching. Happy New Year. Cheers.